the New York Post has now issued a conditional apology for a cartoon that appeared to compare President Obama to a chimpanzee. But the latest statement by the paper is only adding fuel to the fire. More on that in a moment. First on Wednesday, the New York Post published this cartoon showing a police officer shooting at a chimpanzee. Another police officer is saying in a caption, they'll have to find someone else to write the next stimulus bill. Here's the paper's latest statement. Wednesday's page six cartoon was meant to mock an ineptly written federal stimulus bill, period. But it has been taken as something else, as a depiction of President Obama as a thinly veiled expression of racism. This most certainly was not its intent. To those who were offended by the image, we apologize. However, there are some in the media and in public life who have had differences with the Post in the past, and they see the incident as an opportunity for payback. To them, no apology is due. Sometimes a cartoon is just a cartoon, even as the opportunists seek to make it something else. Al Sharpton called the Post apology a conditional statement of regret. Sharpton is himself a controversial figure, so here's what Spike Lee said today. I think that all Americans should be appalled by this cartoon, racist and sensitive cartoon that was in the New York Post. But the New York Post also has had a history of doing stuff like this. Joining us now with their views on the New York Post statement today are Baratunde Thurston, co-founder of JackAndJillPolitics.com, and Jenk Uger. Baratunde, let's start with you. The Post says, to those who were offended by the image, we apologize. How is that? Well, first of all, I'd just like to say it's pretty appropriate to have a conversation about race with David Schuster, Baratunde Thurston, and Jank Uger. I think we're kind of halfway there uh, <laughs> already. Look, we all know that when someone says, I'm sorry if certain people are offended, what they're saying is, I'm not really sorry. And what Spike said, I say what he said to that. And we, the New York Post does have a history in this case. So the apology is a formality, but it clearly wasn't very sincere. Jank Uger, your view. I think it's a bad idea to call this racist. Is the cartoon offensive? Of course! Is it insensitive? Certainly. But once you call something racist, everybody starts backpedaling away, and we don't have that dialogue that Eric Holder, our Attorney General, told us to have. He said we're a nation of cowards, but people are scared of being called racist or other names. So I think it's a bad idea to shut off conversation that way. But Jank, why is it so difficult for the, for the New York Post simply to say, we're sorry, and leave it at that? I think partly because they feel they're under attack. Now, I don't want to defend the New York Post. I don't like the New York Post. I, I take issue with them uh, on many other issues. And I take issue with the cartoon itself. I think it was a bad idea. But once you get somebody under attack, then they get, go back to their foxholes and they say, hey, you know what, then I'm going to fight back and I'm going to stand up and I'm not going to give you the apology that you're looking for. And I, I've seen it happen with you know people that I've discussed this with uh, throughout uh, a L.A., when I talk to white people about it, they go, what's the big deal? I mean, why is everybody calling it racist? You see how they're instantly defensive. When you want to ask them the question, can you not see how it might be offensive? Um, Bertunde, here's yeah. what the, uh, the governor, David Patterson, has said today. He said, I think that what some who are offended are saying is that the reference to President Obama seemed rather obvious to a lot of people. The Post has said that was not their intention, and I think that at this time when tensions are running high with an economy down and also, you know, even the media outlets having to lay off people, it is an act of sensitivity that I applaud because it is very easy to get into these types of fights. People are easily offended. I mean, I've been vindicated. I've, I've indicated that I've been offended by a few things that have gone on and on and on, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what do you think of Governor Patterson's uh, statement? Well, I think Governor Patterson does make a solid point, and I'd really like to return to what Jenk was saying. What I tried to bring up on sure. Wednesday when we talk about this is less about perceptions and feeling and more about the real harm. And I cited a UCLA professor, Philip Atiba Goff, and what he studied is you know, the actual racial disparities and discrimination, not whether white people feel guilty or whether black people are too insensitive, but why there are so many in prison, why police are more violent toward those who have browner skin than they need to be based on all available evidence and all the, the rules of the land. So that's the, kind of the conversation that I think the country should be courageous enough to have. I think sensitivity is important, but it's the real harm that I'm much more concerned about. And Jen, don't, uh, uh, doesn't the New York Post get in the way of that conversation when the New York Post can't even issue an apology correctly? I mean, that, that's a great conversation, as Baratunde said, that we ought to be having. Instead, the New York Post has again made it about the New York Post. 
I understand what you're saying, David, but in this case, uh, I'm not buying it, to be honest with you, because, look, it, we get into two different camps, and we and we get entrenched in those positions. I read what Barr Tunde is talking about that Dr. Goff published. I went to Jack and Jill Politics, his website, and he makes a great point, but the New York Post and the people, much more importantly, because I don't really care about the New York Post, the people who support the New York Post or uh, other people who feel like, hey, why is this offensive, are not going to hear any of that if like you see with Spike Lee and Al Sharpton in that case, you yell at racism. Then they, they won't have the conversation. And that conversation is critical. I agree with Eric Holder. And, and I but agree. But then how do we get to the conversation that Baratunde is saying that uh, we obviously need to have? I mean, if, if I could jump in, I think cartoons like this, although they were muddy, I think the, the satirical point was pretty much lost. And, and I do comedy. You know, I, I actually like a lot of offensive comedy that's out there if there's a clear point, if there's a target, and if it's saying something constructive. I think this was pretty unclear for those who defended and very clear for those who were offended by it. But I do think the cartoon served a purpose that we actually are having this conversation. We're talking about psychological studies. We're talking about police brutality. We're talking about the role of satire in society. So even though this began as a confusing and potentially destructive act, it turns into a more constructive conversation than the one that was happening a week ago. Well, hey, Baratunde, you've changed David, my mind I on this. Maybe the New York Post... Maybe the New York Post can continue with their uh, crazy statements to keep this story going because it is a conversation that we need to have. And if the New York Post's own stupidity is the, is the reason we're going to keep going, then I guess God bless them. In any case, Baratunde, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, Cenk Uger, we appreciate you coming on as well. Good stuff.